Hello and welcome to By The Numbers, I'm FMT, I hope you're doing well. In this episode we've got to the point where the split has happened in the Premiership so we can get on with the last um, section of the season where we can try and see if we will survive essentially. Um, so you can see in the table here we're still in 10th, we've not managed to get above 10th because of the gap between us and 9th was huge uh, previously, it's still quite big now but it was, it was much bigger before. We've got 30 points. Porter down area sort of nine points behind us in 11th and the game in hand they did have over us previously is now gone and Ballard and Millard United are bottom they've got 18 points so they're about 12 points behind us so three to four wins difference essentially now because we really managed to kind of kick on so I'll show you the schedule um so I'm the last one we saw was the 5 0 win against Portadown. We've got our new strikers, Alan O'Connor, uh, Mc Matt McGee, alongside uh, Eddie Gregg, which gave us a, a strike force that's actually decent, which you can see when we were 5 0, even with the player sent off on the half an hour mark, we still managed to kind of boss that match. Then we played Institute. Now, Institute had beaten us not too long ago, 5 1, and this is with our new tactics, so with a different team. Um, a couple of months ago, they'd beaten us comprehensively. Admittedly, they were a little lucky in that one because of the sort of long range kicks and stuff. Long range kicks, long range goals. Uh, but in this one, we won 4 1 um, easily. So, Greg, McVeigh, and McGee with the brace. So, that works out nicely. Then we played Cliftonville and we beat them 2 1. The Greg and McVeigh again. So, McVeigh getting them from there. Um, free kicks and corners who's knocking them in from. Then we played Dergview in the quarter final and I benched pretty much all my strikers and um, just to rest them because Dergview are two divisions below us. Yeah they're two divisions below us we're in the bottom division. And I thought we'd probably beat them anyway, but even if we didn't I wouldn't be too bothered. It ended up going all the way into penalties. Um Greg and O'Connor came off the bench to help out towards the end because he was dragging a bit, but we've been knocked out of there. But the board are fine because although we could have won that and got to the semi finals, um, who would we have been against in the semi finals? We would have been against Larn in the semi finals and they would have beaten us anyway, so it's no big loss. Then we played Ballymena and we got a one all draw, so quite a good run here. Um, which has meant we've been able to put some daylight between us and everyone else. It's actually been quite nice to play well and win. In fact, if we look at the um, Premiership, let's look at our record. So last season, we finished on 31 points. So we're almost you know, at the level we were last season. The season before that, we finished on 35. And I say we've never only had two of the seasons in the Premiership. So we could be our record. Well, I'm certainly going to beat what we had last season. I don't know if we can overhaul the gap between us and Cliftonville, but that's not what we're bothered about, really. So there's five games left to play, 15 points on offer, which means Ballard and Millard can finish on 33 points and Portadown can finish on 36. So two wins almost gets us the point of being safe for definite. Depends what happens in kind of other matches. Anything extra is a bonus, and obviously if we take any points off Portadown and Ballon Millard, they essentially count double almost, it increases the gap. They lose points, we gain them. So it's looking decent. So what I'm gonna do in this episode is I'm gonna play the first match, which is gonna be against Crusaders. Portadown and Ballon Millard are playing each other this week. Um where are we? Somewhere. There we go. I need to a little while to get back to it. Portadown and Ballon Millard are playing each other as well, so depending on what the results are, we could end up definitely safe from automatic. Um, we'll have a better idea of what's going on. Depending on what the situation is, I might play our next match, Portadown, in the same video, or I might spread it along. So we'll see. We've got Crusaders, so we've had some interesting matches against them. We've got a few changes we need to make. So we're going to bring McLaughlin on for Devlin. Burns going to have to come off a right. 
I'll make a few changes here and there. Gordon on there. Don't know who I took off then. I've taken someone off that I didn't mean to. Down Ian. And I think it's Conor McGraw that we accidentally took off. So you've got McGovern, Downey, Edgar, Clark, McGraw, Gordon and Heron on the bench. That should be enough. Um, little, I'm going to put there. What's he unhappy about? Once initially replaying time, well, he can start this one. We well, could do, if we put the right player on. There we go. And let's see how we get on. So McGee and O'Connor have already scored as much or more than our other strikers. Greg's the one who's still sort of shooting off into the distance. He's looking like he might break the record as well. Well, the amount of goals scored in the Premiership, not for us, just the record. Which is not bad for his, his first full season with us. A point against Crusaders would be good. Anything extra would be amazing. But I think we've got enough in us to probably beat Portadown and Ballon Mallard. Um face to face and maybe scrape a point or two elsewhere which is all we need don't need any huge heroics at this stage unless we completely cock it up donald out to mcveigh mcgee on to connor the has been doing quite well he's very small but very wriggly what a shot that McGee blasts that one in. Not a typical goal for us. We're all, normally in the area scoring those kind of things, but absolute rocket. So Burns seemed to get confused about where the ball was, and McCallion picked that one up. I'd be irritated if that happened to me. And there we go. McGee gets another goal. Need to work out how to keep them in the team next season. I've had my contract extended, so I've got at least another season in me with them. Do I think I'm going to be fired? I think I could still be relegated at this point and not be fired. Right, picks it up. Back to Williamson. Forward, but not quite enough on it. Ooh, and they're back in it. Not a bad finish. Assisted by Ryan Barr, who's one of our youth products. Probably one of our best ever youth products that we never got to keep. In it goes. Poor keeping, I think, as well. That's okay, we're drawing. Check the latest scores, really, shouldn't I? Portadown and Ballamalada drawing as well. As things stand, nothing's really changed. Williamson, longish, but no one there. All right, let's go again. Buckley, and I wish Devlin wasn't. Suspended because he's been really good on the left wing the past few matches. Williamson in. Callian arrives late, but not late enough because he's offside by all accounts. We can't see, but that's quite a big gap. So, yeah. Ooh, almost. We should be able to do reasonably well and pick up a few points. Like, I'm reasonably confident of getting 36 points and finishing with more points than we have ever finished. Oh, clear just. Um, just because the team's in a good run of form. The team's playing well. Got some good players now. Oh, Greg on Ian. McGee, don't know what he's doing, but that wasn't, that wasn't right. And we're playing teams who are in the same kind of skill bracket as us. We're not having to play Lan and Linfield, for example, which are kind of dead games to us, really. It's like O'Connor was going to get through there. McGee, back to my clock and put him through. Oh, well finished. From the false nine, Mr. Matt McGee. It's goal of the season. Not bad, considering he's only been here for a few games. On his hat trick with an hour to go. He's also on a yellow though, so he could end up getting sent off for the way he's playing. 
and clear it. That's fine as well. Send Bar off as well, the traitor. Callion goes in. Oh, Greg almost. Offside though. Oh, back it goes. There O'Connor scoring for this one. Entertaining half an hour though. Four goals. Right, McGee. Faye back to McLaughlin. I think I've got more out of McLaughlin on this left hand side than I have done when he's ever been up front. I think that's how he's going to have to play from now on. He's, he's a winger rather than a striker for me now. Oh, nicely finished, but they don't deserve it. Didn't quite get rid of him, we didn't pick him up again. If we lose, we lose. That's perfectly fine. We've put in a good effort this season. Once we found our feet, this is bad there. Potential lower leg injury, that could be anything. Right, McGraw coming on. Yeah, that's not good. Quite worried about that. McGee's also tired. If we don't look like we're going to come back into it, McGee's going to have to come off. I need him for the other matches. We have been the better team, I think. Porter down a beat in Ballon Millard. As it stands, I don't think we're any closer to guaranteeing safety. Porter down will have closed the gap on us, and Ballon Millard will be in the exact same position they were. Good tackles going in there. Need to take this game the scruff of the neck and get back in it if we can. Not quite enough, and it goes back to them. I'll get stopped there. We are dedicated to making sure he's not going to score. Going to score now, isn't he? I don't think I told them to go in extra hard, but they seem to be doing it on bar. Which I'm okay with. Right. Get it down. Counter attack on. That was the wrong, wrong choice. It goes long. Connor back across. Might swap O'Connor and McGraw around. are edging it now in the um, match stats, but I know what our team's like. I know we've been doing okay. Let's move these two around. I don't actually have another striker on the bench. Downy on the McGee. So that false nine position, the midfielder can play it better than the other striker roles. McGrath picks it up. And it counts. It's his first senior goal. His other goals have been in the cups. So it's not counted as a senior one. Good time to score. Guess there's a point. Twenty minutes to go. Any other subs we want to make? Let's bring on Heron. Oh, really? Every time. There we go. 
Kelly gets his yellow and off he comes. Not sure what the point of that one was. Saw a goal in the Portadown match there. Alan Millard have come back into it. It's a draw there. Off he goes. Get rid. Thanks, Ref. Oh, really? Absolute rocket. And Portadown are winning now as well. Perfect. Not getting stopped by anything, was it? Especially not the wall we were putting together. Downy. Free kick special? Nah, straight the keeper. Stop him. McManus has played well. 5 3. This one's ended. At least you'll see lots of goals. Ah, uh, well. It's a good tactic for scoring. For everyone, I think. A few clean sheets with this uh, tactic. Williamson's going to get sent off. Perfect. It's been a long match. Make any changes. It really doesn't matter at this stage. Come on, just blow the whistle ref so we can check the table and see what's what. Because there'll only be 12 points up for grabs after this. Alright. Heron, forwards. Come on, blow the whistle. It's almost seven minutes of extra time now. We've both had a player set off. Two goal gap. There we go. So let's have a quick look at the table then. Gave it everything. Better performance than we've had in some matches. So, four games left. I mean, it's 12 points left. 30 points is a maximum Ballon Millard can get. Um, the goal difference is so huge that we lost everything and they won everything. I still think we'd finish above them. Um, but they have to win all their matches and they're not going to. So I don't think we're going to get automatically relegated. Porter Down, on the other hand, closed it to six points. Um, obviously 12 to play for. We've got them next. If we win, that leaves nine points to play for and we would be nine points ahead of them. Uh, if we lost, it's nine points to play for and they would be three behind us. So the next match is pretty important. So we're going to come back and play it in this episode. Okay, so we're back and ready for the next match, but something has happened in the meantime. So I don't know if you remember in the last match, but Greg had to come off. Uh, Eddie Greg had to come off because of a lower leg injury. And a lower leg injury it happens to be a broken lower leg. So he's out for seven to ten months because I paid for a specialist. I paid about four grand for a specialist to look at his legs. But that's basically him out until guess almost the middle of next season start to middle of next season which is gutting because he's got 23 league goals in 31 appearances he was three off i think the record uh, for a single season which is devastating because we got strikers to kind of help and support him and now he's broken his leg that's what happens when you rely too much on one player i think without him we'd been in dire straits already so he's done his shift for the season and now everyone else needs to pick it up. So we're playing Porter down. The win against Porter down should put us in a position where we can't go down automatically. Porter down could still eventually leapfrog us if we're not careful. So we've got a few suspensions and obviously the injury here to deal with. Let's just get rid of these. So we'll put Edgar on. 
No, I got rid of him. I didn't put him on, did it? I'm not doing very well, am I? Right, Edgar on at left back. Left wing, we will put on. Guess. Guess Jamie Dunn. And on the right, we'll put on Heron. And then in that pressing forward role, it's time for Bonis to come back. Because Bonis apparently can play the pressing forward role. I'm not convinced, but we'll give him a go. And then the rest of these changes here. It means we probably need... Well, Glenn Byrne can actually come back on for right. It's all right. At least that's, that's one bit of good news. Um, Cockroft on the bench. That's kind of it. That's what we're going to have to go with. It is irritating that Greg is injured. What I'm really worried about is that he won't come back and be as good as he was. It's not like we've got great facilities. Yes, yeah, so I spent the money sending specialists, so hopefully he'll be all right. Momentum is important. So we did beat them, was it 4 or 5-0 last time we played them? A win here would be big. Give us the momentum. Put us in a position where they have a lot of pressure on them in terms of them needing to win most of their remaining matches where we could get away with just one additional win, I think it was. Can't remember the mass now. That Greg injury has really thrown me. Right, done. Whips it in. Bonus back to Heron. Back out to Dunn, in it goes again. Connor back heels it. McGee straight the keeper. So at least McGee and Connor are doing alright. Heron's been quite good on the right this season. It's this sort of formation since we've um started using three at front has given him a bit more kind of license to, to get forward somehow. I guess maybe it's a space thing, but it's worked for him. I was thinking of getting rid of him, but actually now he can stay. There are a few players whose contracts aren't going to be renewed. Bonis might be one of them. Just I don't know if I can justify paying him any kind of wages when he's only getting two or three goals after 20 games or so. Ooh, Ronnie saved that one eventually. Another thing for us to keep an eye on is actually the Balin Mallard uh, results, because if they Drop points, they're done. Doesn't really matter what we do. They're in that situation where they need to win all of theirs and hope that we lose all of ours as well. Good tackle, but didn't regain it. Ronnie gets it. I've already kind of got one eye on next season, which I probably shouldn't do until we sort out survival. But I have enjoyed kind of reviving the team this season. Burn. I was not expecting that. That's not normally part of his repertoire. Just before half time as well, it's a bit of a sucker punch. Yeah, beautifully taken. Poor keeping, in fairness, but beautifully taken all the same. Keeps that up. Right. Let's scores. I'm allowed a drawing. So I think we're still in a good position with this. It goes long. Bonish trying his best. Interesting ball in McGee's free. Dunn tries again. Oh, so many opportunities there. So many attempts. Come on. Dunn just eventually realising he needed to run for that. Ooh. 
Ooh, that looked like that might have gone in. Oh, what had potential to go in anyway. Holding it together. So obviously I've jinxed this, and we'll concede now. Strain long, key doesn't quite get it down. The key is a bit short, but he is talented. What was that? We didn't need that to happen. That's poor girl keeping my horn should we got that space anyway, but look what was that just like Just pushing it in. I don't think Ronnie McDonald Yeah, I don't think he understands what his hands are for. It's getting a little bit taxi now. Done long bonus sneaks in. Is he offside? No, there we go. Oh, bonus knows I'm gonna get rid of him. Does this every season? Just turns it on just as I'm considering whether I'm going to actually. No, it's fine, it's fine. Yeah, some of the players just know they turn it on around contract renewal time. Little goes long. Oh, Mahan again, he's too fast for him. That is a definite penalty. That's got to be a red card as well. Beautifully cynical. Just the yellow. Let's make some subs. That's almost certainly going to go in. Let's get McGrath on in the middle. Um, interesting, some, some good players there, well, some good ratings going on. I don't want to spoil it too much by taking anyone off, but... Okay, Gavin Little, we could have Greg come on for that. He saves this, then Strain gets some of the credit for that foul. Almost. Had to be done because he was going to score anyway, I think. So, yeah, make the change anyway. Back to just having the points. The lead's never lasted that long, has it? Greg's already got a yellow card, he's not been on that long. Oh, Heron's going off. Second yellow. At this stage, we just need to hold on. Just shout at them. Calm down, lads. Now they're bored. That's the wrong one. Strain doing his job. Hold on for a minute. That's all we need. Go on, McGrath. Let him know he's in a game. Held, finally, by Ronnie McDonald. It's taken him 93 minutes, but now he understands what his hands are for. They're not just for, like, parrying the ball into the net. You can actually hold on to things and stop them. O'Connor looked like he was going to control that and skillfully move through then on the turn. Right. Ballon Millard won. Oh, it's all up in the air. Oh, all up in the air. Um, we should have won that one. Fine, beat him actually. No, because his final his final racing wasn't great. You can deal with that. So where are we? Three games left. Nine points available. Ballon and Millard can only get thirty points. So no matter what happens, we're not going to be automatically relegated. And the best they can do is get into the playoff bit. With nine points left to go as well, we can't get higher than 10th. and make it to 40 points if we're fortunate. We cannot overhaul Cliftonville, so it's just a fight for whether we're going to be 10th or whether we're going to be 11th. 
for this one. If you look at the schedule, we've got Ballon Millard next, so we'll probably play that one. Um, I'll say probably will we play that one. Let me think about it. So nine points means that port down and finish on 34. So I will come back for the Ballon Millard one because it's a good chance for us to get three points. If we get three points then, that means we have two games left to just get a point. Assuming Portadown don't drop points in their next match. So the next match against Ballon Millard, we could potentially end up safe from relegation completely. So thanks very much for watching. We'll come back for the next episode, which could well be the last episode of this season. Um, yeah, keep our fingers crossed.